I have a simple question for you. How many innocent Palestinian civilians, men, women and children, does Israel have to slaughter? How many war crimes does Israel have to commit? How much death and destruction does Israel have to visit on the people of Gaza and Palestine before you will call for and impose sanctions on Israel and expel the Israeli ambassador from this country and call for the immediate referral of Israel to the International Criminal Court for crimes against humanity and war crimes. Because in front of the world, by their own admission, Israel is committing war crimes. They have stated it publicly. This isn't a matter of opinion. Uh, they declared their intention to force, through the threat of military bombardment, more than a million, and it is now well more than a million, Palestinians from their homes in northern Gaza and ethnically cleanse them. A crime against humanity. They stated publicly and have done it in front of the eyes of the world, the intention to deny to 2.2 million people water, electricity, medicine, uh, life-saving uh, equipment in front of the eyes of the world, and they're doing it. And every minute, children are being slaughtered uh, by their artillery, their relentless bombardment of residential complexes, of hospitals, of schools, uh, of civilian infrastructure. They just go on and on and on, and you do nothing. Nothing. Words of concern, but no action to hold them to account. And it is clearly premeditated war crimes and genocide. Genocide. We have Jewish uh, people in the United States and Canada around the world and Israel calling it genocide. Uh, scholars, academics saying this is genocidal. Let me qu quote you a few things. Israeli general, quote, human animals must be treated as such. There will be no electricity and no water. There will only be destruction. Uh, Yoav Gallant, a minister, says we are fighting human animals. We will, quote, act accordingly. Every, we will remove, quote, every restriction on the IDF. Smotrich, another minister, there is no such thing as the Palestinians. The president of Israel refers to the people of Gaza and says they are all responsible. Before October the 7th, Netanyahu appear, appeared in front of the UN General Assembly with a map of Israel that had removed all references to Palestine. A clear declaration of intent to destroy the Palestinian uh, people uh, and steal all of their land. 6,000 Palestinians killed between 2008 and before October the 7th. Thousands of Palestinians hostage in administrative detention without trial. Deputy, when are you going to move beyond you. words of concern and impose sanctions and expel the Israeli ambassador of this apartheid murderous state? I, I, I don't want to see any innocent people being killed in the Middle East, and I don't think you do either. And you specifically mentioned Palestinian people. Uh, I would also extend that to Israeli people who you didn't mention. Uh, innocent Israeli people should not be killed either. Um, by Hamas uh, or by any uh, Palestinian armed group, uh, nor should any of our own citizens be killed. Let's not forget one of our own citizens, a joint Irish-Israeli citizen. Her mother comes from County Leash, spoke to the family. Uh, she was killed by Hamas uh, two weeks ago, and we have great fears uh, for uh, Palestinian Irish citizens now living uh, in Gaza uh, that they may be uh, victims uh, in what Israel is doing in Gaza at the moment. Um, in terms of sanctions, Deputy, uh, when it comes to sanctions, we always act multilaterally. Um, individually imposed sanctions aren't effective. They would have no benefit for the Palestinians. They might even just do us uh, a degree of harm. Sanctions are only effective when they're imposed multilaterally uh, by, by states uh, acting, acting together. Uh, in relation to the ambassador, uh, we, we don't have any plans to expel any ambassador. Um, we didn't expel the Russian ambassador. Uh, and I don't think there's anyone in this house uh, who's been as supportive of Ukraine's battle for freedom uh, as I have, uh, but we took a very particular view 
uh, that it's important to have some line of communications open, and that's why we have ambassadors. Uh, if you expel an ambassador or close an embassy, the only line of communication is minister to minister uh, or sec gen to sec gen, and that's if you can even get a phone call. Uh, we have citizens in Palestine, we have citizens in Israel, we have citizens in Russia. Uh, it's important that we're able to keep those lines of communication open. It serves nothing uh, to close them. Uh, even countries at war with each other have ambassadors. Um, and that's for, for, that, that, for that obvious reason. Uh, in terms of what's going on in, in Gaza, let me be very clear. Uh, the view of the Irish government uh, is that collective punishment is wrong. Um, and the innocent civilians and people of Gaza should not be subjected to collective punishment. Uh, that's wrong. Uh, hostage taking is wrong and they should be released. And it's not acceptable to target civilian infrastructure. And we've been very clear about that all along and will continue to be so. And we'll use our voice at European level uh, and also um, at, uh, at, 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 at EU level as well, as much as we can. And Deputy, while I, I think you're entirely sincere in your views, and I know you've campaigned on these issues for a very long time, um, let's, not forget, let's not forget what Hamas's objective is as well. Hamas's objective is the destruction of Israel. It's ending the existence of a Jewish state which was established by the UN 75 years ago. It is ending that state from the river to the sea. Is that not genocide as well? First of, all, first of all, I'm horrified by every single death. But you see, the world is responsible for failing to call out the reality of the Israeli regime. It is an apartheid regime. It was set up on the basis of the ethnic cleansing of 750,000 Palestinians. It has sustained itself through the ethnic cleansing ongoing of Palestinians, day in, day out, in East Jerusalem, uh, across the West Bank, uh, everywhere, even where Hamas, there's no Hamas. I mean, I lived there. At the beginning of the first Palestinian Antifada in 1987, there was no Hamas. Young people rose up because they were, their entire future had been stolen from them. They were suffering ferocious oppression at the hands of the Israeli regime and military, and they rose up. There was no Hamas. The PLO weren't even in the country. They were in Tunis. And Israel met them with brutality, with murder, with administrative detention, with ethnic cleansing, and they have continued that day in, day out. And yet, your government refuses to keep, even call them an apartheid regime. You refuse to acknowledge the ethnic cleansing, the war crimes that... Human rights organization after human rights organization has begged and appealed to you and European governments to hold them account, to end their impunity. The, the world has given them the license to conduct the savagery they are doing now and they are responsible for the crimes that we are witnessing. If we want to end the murder, we have to hold Israel accountable for its crimes. Deputy, I believe Ireland has a role to play in trying to bring, bring peace and justice and order to the Middle East. Uh, and that means um, working with our colleagues in the European Union, persuading the US, working at UN level uh, to try and push uh, for a new peace initiative to push for a two-state state solution. Being absolutist on one side or the other removes our influence. The only influence we have uh, is by trying to build partnerships with the EU, with the US, with other countries in the Middle East, like Egypt, for example, Jordan and others, Lebanon, that we have relations with, and at the UN, to push for a new peace initiative that can do what I believe is still just about possible, and that is the establishment of a two-state solution, um, a Palestinian state alongside Israel, um, secure, and hopefully in time being able to have normal contacts and normal economic relations. I appreciate your view is different, uh, that there should only be a one-state solution, but I think anyone watching what's going on uh, can see why that wouldn't be viable and why that wouldn't last.